everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hello, and welcome back. I'm excited for another expression episode today. This is going to be a two-part lesson in the first part, the expression part of this episode. You'll hear a joke, you'll do some pronunciation exercises, and you'll learn the common English expression, cat got your tongue. (laughs) In part two, which as you should know by now, is the culture and history topic of the day, we're going to be talking about Dr. Seuss. If you don't know who Dr. Seuss is, you should. He was a cartoonist and author that brought us Cat in the Hat, The Grinch, Green Eggs and Ham, and over 40 other incredible books for children and adults around the world. He's been called the father of contemporary children's literature. One out of four children in the U.S., receive a Dr. Seuss book as their first book in life. And there's a good reason for it. They're playful and clever with quirky images and rhymes, and there's a lot of repetition, so it's ideal for beginner readers. Over 650 million copies of his books have been sold, so I'd say It's worth learning about this inspiration. I guarantee if you bring up his name with anyone from here, their eyes will light up and they'll probably smile. Be sure to stay tuned for part two, not only to learn about this legend, but to have a conversation starter. Let's go ahead and start with a joke for this episode. Are you ready? Where does a cat go? If it loses its tail, do you know? A retail store. Do I need to explain this? I'm not so sure, but since this is an English lesson, let's do it. A retail store is a shop where, as a consumer, you go to buy small quantities of goods or products. For example, a clothing store is a retail store, as is a department store, a convenience store, or even a grocery store. A retail store sells to the ultimate or last customer, so products are not intended for resale. The humor in this joke comes from the fact that a cat without a tail might go to a retail store. Maybe they'll go to buy a new tail, or maybe the store literally puts tails on animals that have lost them. So there's wordplay with the word retail. As you know, in English, re, as a prefix, means to do again. My hair is messed up. I'm going to redo it. You messed up my bed. Now I need to remake it. The cat lost its tail, so they're going to a retail store. I think you get the joke. Let's hear it one more time. Where does a cat go if it loses its tail? A retail store. That's a real dad joke, that one. (laughs) Hope you enjoyed it. Let's move on to the expression of the day, which is cat got your tongue cat got your tongue? We'll go through the definitions of the individual words first, and then we'll go through some example exercises. A cat is a mammal with fur, so that hair that's on its body that covers from head to toe. It has whiskers and claws. Big cats can be wild like mountain lions or pumas, while other cats are small. Many cat breeds are domesticated and kept as pets. 
Pet cats may enjoy catching mice and cuddling. They often purr when they cuddle. They meow to talk and hiss when they're angry. My daughters like to talk about whether they like cats or dogs better. Got is the past tense of get. It means to obtain or come into possession of. If I say, I got a new dress, it means I obtained a new dress. I probably went out to the store and bought it. I got a new dress. Your is a possessive determiner. It's the possessive form of you. It shows possession or ownership. I brought your jacket. It's in the car. A tongue is a muscle in the mouth of a mammal that's used to taste, lick, eat, and it's crucial for speaking. It allows us to articulate words. I have a tongue in my mouth. Once again, the expression for the day is a question. Cat got your tongue? In other words, does the cat have your tongue? Is the cat in possession of your tongue? It's a ridiculous visual. If the cat's got your tongue, you can't talk. You're speechless. And that's pretty much how we use it in English conversation. We often ask someone, cat got your tongue? In situations when they can't respond or they don't respond. Let's talk about the origin of cat got your tongue. While there are a few theories, I'll share two. In the olden days, there was a whip called cat o nine tails. In other words, cat of nine tails. A whip is a tool with many long leather strings attached to a handle. And it's used by someone who wants to exert either pain or fear on another. Maybe they want whatever it is, an animal or a human, to be obedient. According to Grammarly, sailors used this whip, this cat o nine tails, on victims to, quote, render the victim speechless. Another theory is that back in the day, kings, kings of the ancient time, used to punish liars by cutting off their tongues and feeding their tongues to cats. Without their tongues, they were speechless. Now, there's no evidence for either of these theories, but I have a feeling it'll help you remember this expression. Just imagine a nice chubby cat eating your tongue in a fancy dish and you sitting there watching, speechless. Cat got your tongue? Whoever is asked, cat got your tongue, might not have a good response or a defense for themselves if they've done something wrong. Let me give you an example of this. Imagine a girl goes into her mom's closet and borrows a beautiful bracelet without asking, and then she loses it. She has no idea where the bracelet is. When her mom asks her if she knows where the bracelet is, it's missing, her daughter looks at her in silence. In this moment, the mother might say, what, cat got your tongue? In other words, why are you not responding? What happened? Come on, answer me. Example number two. Let's pretend you're in high school and you decide to skip class. In English, we also call this ditching class. It's when you don't attend class. You go somewhere else. And on this day, you go to the mall with a friend. While walking down some steps in the mall, your mom sees you. When she approaches and asks you what you're doing out of class, you don't know what to say. You get quiet. You're not sure whether you should lie Maybe tell her you're out running an errand for a teacher, or if you should fess up. As you stare at her speechless, she might say, Cat got your tongue? 
The first two examples were of someone doing something bad and then not being able to come up with a response or a defense for themselves. The third example is personal, and it shows you how to use this question in a more general situation, in a situation when you're at a loss for words, when you can't think of what to say, when you're speechless. Example number three. When I was in my 20s, I lived in New York City. And one evening, I went out to a party with my friend Nina at a place called the Bowery Ballroom. When we left the party, we walked by a stunning hotel called the Bowery Hotel. And we were like, ooh, look at this place. Let's go and see if we can use their restroom. It was a Friday night, and only guests and friends of guests were allowed in the lobby bar. But we were let in one at a time to use the restroom. On my way to the restroom, I was approached by an actor named Topher Grace, who you guys might know as Eric Foreman in that 70s show. He's sort of nerdy, but I had had a fat crush on him since the movie Win a Date with Tad Hamilton. And so I was thrilled. <laughs> I'm like, why is he talking to me? So Topher Grace asked me for directions to a club, which is so cool. And it would have been cool if I had said, oh, that's funny. I'm going to that club too. Let's get a cab together. But that didn't happen. Instead, I looked at him speechless. I was at a loss for words. I looked at him like a deer in the headlights, like a total weirdo. In that situation, he could have said, cat got your tongue? In other words, what happened? Why are you speechless? Do you have a response? Are you going to say anything? He didn't say, cat got your tongue. Although it would have been appropriate, he just said, um, okay, and he walked away. I'll never forget that moment, and yeah, I guess the cat got my tongue. We don't really say this in the affirmative. <laughs> um, but on that point, yeah, you were probably wondering if we can use this question in a statement. And I think English is really flexible so that, you know, in most cases, you can make something sound cool if you're playful and confident. But, you know, this expression 95% of the time sounds weird as a statement. If you want to make a statement with this concept of being speechless, I mentioned a few cool words and phrases in the last example. I'll repeat them for you. You can say, I was speechless. I was dumbstruck. I was at a loss for words. I just stared at him like a deer in the headlights. All right. So try to avoid using cat got your tongue as a statement. Keep it as a question. Just my recommendation. I just don't want you guys to sound a little funky. That's my two cents. Let's go ahead and do the pronunciation exercise. We'll use the statement, what happened? Cat got your tongue? Repeat after me. What? What happened? What happened? Cat got your tongue? What happened? Cat got your tongue? In American English, we can also say, cat got your tongue? Gotcha. Gotcha. I bet you didn't notice that T's at the ends of words and the Y that follows, usually with you and your, turns to a CH sound. Why don't you start paying attention to this? CH. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cat got your tongue? So you might hear cat got your tongue or cat got your tongue. They mean the same thing. Let's go through the conjugation. Repeat after me. 
Cat got my tongue. Cat got your tongue. Or cat got your tongue. Cat got her tongue. Cat got his tongue. Cat got its tongue. Cat got our tongues. Cat got their tongues. Note how his sounds like is or dis when it's preceded by a consonant. God is. God is. Cat got his tongue. Same with her. Cat got her tongue. Got her. Got her. Cat got her tongue. In American English, we don't give equal value to every word. It would take too long for us to express our ideas, so we speak quickly, we eat certain letters as we go along, and we call those reduced forms or reductions. We give value to what's important in a sentence. For example, you'll often hear nouns emphasized, verbs emphasized, or content words. If you're interested in learning how we do that, whether you want to improve your accent or not, check out the American English Accent course. You'll find the link to it in the episode notes. That's it for the first part of this two-part episode. Be sure to continue to part two, where we'll be talking about the amazing Dr. Seuss. He's incredible. Hope you're having a nice day. See you soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.